Cracking the Code – Mastering the 4-Hour Work Week Imagine working just 4 hours a week, making tons of money, and living the life of a full-time entrepreneur. It's a trend that's catching on and for good reason. The idea of putting in minimal effort and still getting huge results is pretty attractive, especially with more people wanting to work from home due to the pandemic. We're shifting from the traditional job-focused economy to what's known as the gig economy. In the old job economy, having a degree was crucial for success. Go to school, get a degree, find a job, climb the ladder, and eventually retire. But in the gig economy, things are changing. Remote work is the norm, and companies are hiring freelancers based on their skills, not just their degrees. The pandemic, despite its downsides, accelerated this change. Businesses are realizing they can save money by hiring remote workers and productivity is up. No office rent, no strict clocking in and out, workers can deliver results on their own schedules. People are happier working from home, and there's less commuting, which is also better for the environment. Nowadays, it's common for people to dream of traveling while working. As long as you have a laptop and an internet connection, you can work from anywhere. So, we're in the midst of a transition, moving from one type of economy and mindset to a completely different one, all thanks to this global pandemic. Absolutely, it seems like books such as The 4-Hour Workweek by Timothy Ferris are becoming more realistic in the current transition. Ferris wrote this book in 2007, and interestingly, it predicted the rise of the gig economy over the traditional job-focused economy. While the shift had already begun during Ferris's writing, it has evolved significantly since then, making the book quite revolutionary. The main idea behind the book is that anyone can break free from the typical 9-to-5 routine and create a business that runs itself with minimal management. The key is to have a business model that allows you to work from anywhere, managing everything through your laptop and internet connection. However, it's not just about money. Ferris emphasizes the distinction between being truly wealthy and merely appearing rich. Some wealthy individuals are less free than the middle class because they work so much that they have no time for other aspects of life. For example, someone working 80 hours a week and earning $100,000 may be less free than someone making $40,000 a year but only working 25 hours a week. Ferris's approach revolves around maximizing income while minimizing effort, focusing on achieving efficiency and freedom rather than just financial success. Honestly, when it comes to achieving financial freedom, you might not need as much money as you think. Let's try a cool exercise from a book called F You Money by Dan Locke. He's a successful Canadian Chinese entrepreneur and the book focuses a lot on mindset. Here's the exercise. Picture your dream life. Imagine where you'd live, whether in a beautiful home or while traveling the world. It's entirely up to you. Once you've got that vision, make a list of all the yearly expenses you'd have if you were already living that dream life. Remember, only include things that bring real value or joy. For instance, if you're always on the move, you might not need an expensive car or a massive mansion. Be realistic, but don't hold back on your aspirations, whether that's private chefs, coaches, or fancy clothes. Add up everything on your list and see what the total expenses for one year would be to live that dream lifestyle. You might be surprised that you don't need a million dollars a year to support that life. Maybe you do, and if that's the case, make sure your list reflects ambitious but realistic goals. Some people might end up this list totaling over $10 million, but for many, even $500,000 a year could be enough. It's all about finding what truly matters to you. In the 4-hour work week, Ferris highlights the distinction between what he calls the Ferris and the new rich. The Ferris are those who save money for retirement, and the crucial difference lies in their mindset. Changing this mindset often leads to a different life outcome. 1. Mindset on work The Ferrer, I want to work for myself. While the new rich, I want others to work for me. If you're okay with spending most of your time working, working for yourself is fine. But if you aim for freedom and success without dedicating all your time to your business, a mindset shift is necessary. 2. Mindset on consumption The deferrer, I want to buy all the things that I want, while the new rich, I want to do all the things I want. The real issue here is that many people believe that buying certain things will make them happier. While nice things are positive, they provide only temporary pleasure. Material possessions won't bring long-term happiness. Instead, focus on accumulating experiences. Stop buying material items and start investing in adventures with the money you earn. Aspire to do wonderful things rather than owning expensive objects. Another crucial distinction lies in the fact that the new rich always have specific goals for their money. They don't pursue wealth just for the sake of it. They have well-defined plans for the cash they want to make. This is vital for several reasons. 
Firstly, it helps eliminate distractions and impulsive buying. In the commercial world, everything can seem like an opportunity. Buy now before the sales ends or save X amount of dollars on this item. These aren't genuine opportunities. They're distractions and marketing strategies that can lead you to purchase things you don't really want or need and that won't bring you true happiness. Setting clear financial goals also helps you resist the social pressure to own certain things. Just the idea of wanting to be a member of the new rich can be controversial because of negative associations people have with the wealthy, especially those seeking significant results with minimal effort. Once you have the money, there's often pressure from peers to acquire certain liabilities like buying a car or a house, that may not align with their actual goals. The negative association with working less and making more is often misguided. Conventional wisdom sometimes disagrees, viewing the ambition to work less as morally unacceptable. However, the reality is different. If you're investing your own money into a business ethically and legally, there's nothing morally wrong about it. Ultimately, you're generating significant results for numerous people with your products. Entrepreneurs identify a need in the market and create products that fulfill that need, providing jobs in the process. If you're aiming for the 4-hour work week, delegating becomes crucial. About 99% of operations will need to be delegated, which not only helps you but also enables freelancers to earn money, gain credibility, and contribute to the marketplace. In his book, Ferris emphasizes the importance of getting into the habit of delegating. One practical step is to start by hiring a virtual assistant. This initial step helps you become accustomed to the idea of outsourcing tasks, communicating remotely, and effectively giving instructions to people. It's a strategic move to streamline operations and achieve more with less personal time investment. Ferris challenges the traditional concept of time management in his book. According to him, time management for the new rich differs significantly from the common perception. Rather than filling every second of your life with work, he sees it as a strategy to focus on what truly matters. He introduces the 80-20 rule, which suggests that 80% of your output comes from 20% of your input. In practical terms, this means instead of occupying all your time with tasks that yield minimal positive results, you should identify the crucial 20% that leads to significant outcomes and concentrate your efforts there. It's about working smarter, not necessarily harder, and optimizing your time for maximum effectiveness. This essentially means that achieving more can come from doing less. By minimizing wasted time, the moments dedicated to tasks with positive outcomes become more productive as fatigue is reduced. Ferris suggests a straightforward time management approach. Identify tasks that bring positive results, schedule them with deadlines, and focus solely on these to maximize productivity. During active work periods, Ferris recommends avoiding excessive consumption of irrelevant or unhealthy information. For instance, starting the day with negative news has been scientifically linked to increased anxiety. Ferris advises limiting information intake to essentials needed for survival, making money, staying in business, and maintaining a healthy life. Unnecessary information serves as distractions and can be detrimental to well-being. Starting a 4-hour work week business is simpler than you might think. 1. Understand the market. Find the market that you understand well and ideally one in which you are already a part. Being familiar with the market makes things easier and more cost-effective. 2. Identify a need and create a solution. Recognize a specific need within that market and create a product that effectively addresses the problem. 3. Brainstorm product ideas and choose niches. Generate product ideas and select a couple of niches where you can promote your product effectively. 4. Advertise on a budget. Advertise your product with a budget of $5,000 or less. This keeps your expenses low and allows you to reach a broad audience. 5. Opt for low-ticket products. Keep your product price low to make it accessible to a larger number of people. This approach ensures a higher volume of sales. 6. Micro-test before launch. Before officially launching your product, conduct micro-tests with various advertisements to gauge real demand. This step helps you validate the market and fine-tune your approach. Now armed with these basics, you're on your way to understanding and implementing the principles of the 4-hour workweek. If you found this information helpful, feel free to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and have a fantastic day. See you in the next one!